So in a separate video, I'll go ahead and talk about the consensus algorithm itself. But for now, I wanted to focus on my code pattern. So this code pattern will um, will run a hyperledger fabric network using the raft consensus protocol, and will deploy a five node er ordering service, submit transactions via the fabcar UI, and will test the network by stopping some of the nodes. So this is kind of the fabcar UI. We'll make some transactions, and after that. We will look at the logs to see who's the leader, who's, who's sending the heartbeat messages, and who is actually writing the blocks. After we do that, we will be able to stop some of the blocks um, to show that it is crash fault tolerant. So in any sort of raft consensus, you just need a majority or quorum of the nodes to be up. So in our example, we have five nodes, so we need at least three of them to be up. So we'll show both stopping two of the nodes and three of the nodes. So if we stop three of the nodes, the network will not work anymore. Okay, so here's kind of the flow diagram. First, we'll, we'll generate the network, and the, the network will have four peer nodes, two certificate authority nodes, and then five ordering nodes. And we'll build this uh, UI, and we'll, ha we'll have the user submitting transactions um, towards, that, towards this fabric network. Um, first thing we have to do is to clone the repo, so we'll go ahead and do that now. So first I'm going to make a directory and call that the, um, I'll go into my test directory and I'll make a directory um, called um, jan8test, so I'll go into that and then I'll do a git clone. So that the, the repo is about 80 um, or 85 megabytes, so it might take a few minutes depending on your network connection. Okay, so now that we have our uh, RAF fabric sample uh, cloned, the first thing we want to do is actually clean out our Docker images. So if we go into our um, README, uh, second step, you want to clean your Docker images. Um, so we'll go into, so if you check out my Docker images, I have nothing right now, and this looks good, but I'll clean everything up anyways. So I'll go into uh, first, oh, I'll, I'll first go into raft uh, fabric sample, and then I'll go into first network. And after that, I'll go ahead and run UIF, UIFN down. Um, so after we do, we've done BYFM down, um, we can go ahead and clean all the other Docker images. So just be careful with this command because it can um, prune and, and delete a lot of the other images on your system. So don't use it unless you really are okay with deleting all the other Docker images. I'm going to use it because I don't have anything else to worry about right now. Okay, so now that we've cleaned everything, um, we can go ahead and if we have anything in the server directory, we can do we can remove the wallet. But since I don't, since I just cloned this app, I'm not going to do that. Um, so now we're going to actually generate all the cryptographic material with a, a tool called CryptoGen. So this is going to actually create um, all the certificates, and it's going to go and put this into this crypto config directory, um, and we can see all the cryptographic materials um, that has been made. Um, so we can go ahead and go into the MSP and then key store. This will be important later. And this is the private key that's just been created. Now we're going to actually go ahead and create the network itself. So if we look right now, we shouldn't have any Docker containers up. So we have nothing right now, but this is going to build all the Docker images, or we're, it's going to build the containers from the images. So let's go ahead and run this command. Um, so this is going to build um, what we have in our um, template files. So if we look at our actual files, um, we should see exactly what we're going to generate. Um, so we'll create uh, a CA org one, we'll create a CA org two, um, the order, order two, order three, order four, order five, um, peer zero, peer one um, for org one, and then peer zero and peer one for org two. Um, so this is kind of what's going to be created right now. So we'll give it a second to actually create this. Now that we've actually created everything, let's go ahead and um, and we see here that the query was successful and we see the chain code is instantiated. Um, if we look, we should be able to see in our Docker containers, um, we should be able to see that this is the Fabcar um, chain code container and um, for both org one and for org two. 
and we should be able to see all the orders too. Um, so we see order, um, order example, order four, um, peer zero, peer one, order two, CA org two, um, and all the rest of the orders are here. So that's good. Um, so now, the, the, after we've actually done that, we have to go ahead and go into the web client and actually run npm install. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'll actually open up two terminal windows for this. So I'll go into web app and I'll, I'll do a new tab. And then I'll do a couple other new tabs for later. So I'll go into a server and then I'll do npm install. And then I'll go into this server and I'll do an npm. Uh, I'll go into the client and I'll do an npm install. Um, so we've done both of these commands. Um, after that, once we've actually installed the web app dependencies, we need to create a cryptographic identity. Um, so let's go ahead and check out the enroll admin script that's going to help us do that. So you can go ahead and check out the enroll admin script. So you can see that what we're doing is we're getting the certificate authority URL and we're creating a new uh, certificate authority from that and then we're checking if the um, user exists and then after that we're calling enroll and we're passing in the app admin and app admin secret and then we're going to create that identity and then we're going to import it into our wallet. Um, so that's what's going on here. So let's go ahead and try that out. So we'll go ahead and do node enroll admin. Um, so you can see that uh, we got this um, certificate here, and then we got the public and private key. Um, so I did this a little bit out of order. I, I, in the repo, I had the uh, update key store first, and then enroll admin, but it really doesn't matter. So we'll go ahead and go into the uh, update key store. So all this is doing is it's uh, copying what's in the crypto config and pasting it within the connection.yaml. So you can see that right now there's no key store um, uh, path. But there, um, it's all, all it's doing is it's taking whatever uh, crypto config generated and getting that uh, private key and putting that in here. So let's go ahead and run that script too. And we should see this being updated once we finish running the script. So we'll do dot slash update key store. Um, so you can see this is updated and so is this. Um, so now we're basically ready to um, run everything. So now we're doing npm start on the server, npm start on the client. Okay, so now it's compiled successfully, so let's go ahead and check out the app. Um, so lastly, we're going to go to localhost 4200. So we'll go, we'll type in localhost in our browser. And this should get you to the app. Mine is a little bit uh, more updated because I've, I've added a bunch of cars, but you should have at least car uh, 1 through 9 here if everything's working. So. That's more or less it. So today, kind of, I, this video basically showed you all of the steps that you needed to do to actually um, run this uh, Hyperledger Fabric network that's using the RAF consensus. So first, we cloned the repo that had the cryptogen, which generated the cryptographic materials, and all the other binaries that were needed to actually run the network. Then we cleaned our Docker images. Um, we did the build your first network script up. And then we installed the fabcar dependencies, and then we used the Unreal admin script and also the update key store to actually have a connection profile that shows where all of our nodes are listed and the key stores to those nodes. So that connection profile is really the most, um, most important thing, really, and the hardest thing for me to actually understand and grasp. And, and I, I really hope that you will look into it, and that's the connection.yaml within the server file. And then lastly, um, we go ahead and create that cryptographic identi identity, and then we create that identity in the wallet, and then we start the Fabcar web app, and that's you know when we can uh, when we can submit transactions like you saw in the demo. So thanks again for listening. Go ahead and like and subscribe if if you like this content and you want to see more like this, and post any comments um, and questions below. So thank you so much. Bye.